The equations for the input and output voltages for an RL circuit are given below, and all relevant input conditions are zero. Show that the transfer function of the system can be expressed as S over S plus R over L. OK, let's uh, start by getting big E sub I of S. So this is the Laplace transform of little e sub i of t. OK, that's the Laplace transform of the input voltage, which is a function of time. So we want the Laplace transform of this expression here. Now, r is a constant. So since the Laplace transform is a linear operator, we can take out r and multiply by the Laplace transform of little i of t. And l here is also a constant. That's the inductance, and we multiply by the Laplace transform of di, which is a function of time, dt. OK, we follow the usual convention. When we're dealing with the time domain, the dependent variable is a small letter. In the s domain, the dependent variable is the corresponding capital letter. Um, now let's look at the Laplace transform of the derivative. Well, you can just look this up, of course. OK, it's s times big I of s minus little i at time 0. So this is the initial current, the current at time 0. Now, little i of zero is an input condition, and we were given that all relevant input conditions are zero. So, i at time zero is zero. So we can forget about this. So we have just s times big I of s. So next we get the Laplace transform of little e sub O of t. Um, that's the output voltage. So we just have to take out this L, it's a constant. We have to get the Laplace transform of the derivative, which we've already seen as s times big I of s. OK, at last we can write down the transfer function. So we need the Laplace transform of the output divided by the Laplace transform of the input. And uh, when we, we cancel the I of s, and we can divide above and below by L. So if we divide the top by L, we get s. And if we divide the bottom by L, we get r over l plus s. That's exactly what we have to show. Show that if the input voltage is a step function increase of k volts at time t equals 0, that is e sub i of t is k volts for t greater than or equal to 0, then the output voltage will be given by this here. OK, um, right, we are going to get the Laplace transform of the input voltage. So that will give us big I big E sub I of S, because we're going to use the transfer function to get the Laplace transform of the output voltage to get this thing here. OK, so let's look at this here. Well, what do we do to get the Laplace transform of a constant? K is just a fixed number. Well, we if we go to tables, we see that the Laplace transform of the number 1 is 1 over s. So that tells us that the Laplace transform of k, well k can be written as just k times 1 of course. Well that's just k times the Laplace transform of 1. k times 1 over s is k over s. OK, so this thing here is k over s. Right, now we can get big E sub O of s. So I've just cross multiplied here. Um, we can see that the transfer function does not depend on what the input or output voltages look like. It only depends on R and L. These are the constants for the circuit, the resistance and inductance of the circuit. So it doesn't actually matter what form these functions have. The transfer function will always be given by this thing here. OK, so we can always use the transfer function to help us calculate one of these two things. If we have one of them, we can get the other one using the fact that the ratio of these two is always given by s over s plus r over l. So that's what we're doing here. 
Now, so we've P of S is S over S plus R over L, and that's multiplied by K over S. So now we, we can go and get little e um, sub, well not i actually, but o. And of course we're in the time domain. So we want the inverse transform of this quantity here. So if you go to your tables, you'll see an identity that looks like this. Well, not an identity. You'll see that the inverse transform of 1 over s minus a is given by e to the power of a times t. And you can see that this thing has the same form as it. After we've taken the k out, the inverse transform, Laplace transform, is linear, so we can take out a constant multiple. And we can write what's inside as 1 over s minus minus r over l. Now we can compare this expression inside the brackets to this general form here, and we can see what a is. We can see that a is minus r over l. So that's our constant a. And we can just plug in now. The inverse transform is e to the power of a, which is minus r over l, times t. Determine the value of the time constant if R is 120 ohms and L is 80 millihenries. So what is the time constant? It's the time for a system to reach 1 over E of its f initial value. So, um, so here's our system. Okay, it's a decaying exponential function. What's the initial value? Well, that's easy. We just put, plug 0 in for t, and we get ke to the 0, or just k. So the initial value is k. So we want to find out how long it takes for um, the function to drop to 1 over e of k. Now to four decimal places, 1 over e is 0 0.3679, so about 37%. Let's just see a rough sketch. At t equals 0, the value of the output voltage is capital K. Okay, just plug 0 in for t in this and we get capital K. This is a decaying exponential. As a matter of fact, as t approaches infinity, e sub 0, the output voltage, which is a function of time, of course, will approach 0. Okay, because of the minus sign in the power. It's a decaying exponential function. So, how long will it take for the output voltage to drop to um, 1 over e times k, that's roughly 0.37k. I'll write it down to two decimal places here just to make it easier to read. So we need to find that time. So that time is the time known as the time constant, denoted by the letter tau. Now if you do the algebra, you can easily show that tau is equal to L divided by R. So that's worth memorizing. So what you need to do is look at this thing here in front of T and invert it, turn it upside down. And that's the time constant. That's the time taken for the output voltage to decay to roughly 37% of its initial value. Okay, so L is 80 millihenries. Now, we need to convert L to its SI unit, which is henries. A millihenry is 1,000 of a henry, so we divide 80 by 1,000. We get 0 0.08 henries. And the resistance must be in ohms, which it is. So, using the correct SI units, the time constant will come out 
to have units of seconds. So it takes 1 over 1,500 of a second for the output voltage to um, decrease to 1 over E, or roughly 37% of its initial value. OK, let's look at a better sketch of the graph of the function. Um, the input voltage is a step function increase of 20 volts. Well, that's what K is. OK, if we look to the previous part, K is um, the input voltage. And K is what appears in the formula for the output voltage. So K is 20. Now, what about R over L? Well, L over R was 1 over 1500, as we saw. So R over L is 1500. So here's the equation of the graph. It starts at 20. If we plug 0 in for T, we get 20, which is our K. And it decays to 0 because of the minus sign here, of course. Um, so t equals naught, e naught is 20. Now if we get 1 over e times 20, that, that is, one over, 1 over e is the number e, of course, or roughly 37% of 20, um, we get a value of roughly 7.4. And uh, the time constant we know is uh, 1 over 1500, so that's tau. Now, if another interval of time, 1 over 1500, elapses, then the system will have decayed to one third of what it was initi initi well, initially, in this case, means when it was 7.4 volts. So, well, about one third, it's 37%, closer to 37%, roughly about here. So this is after another interval of 1 over 1500. So this will be 2 over 1500. Of course, these are in seconds. Assuming that the other units are in the, have the correct, are, in, are SI units. Resistance in ohms, um, inductance in henrys. Now I won't bother calculating this value, so you just get 1 over E times 7.4. That'll be 20 over e squared. And uh, we can let another interval of time equal to the time constant elapse. So that's roughly here somewhere. And we get 1 over e times this value. So we get a value, it's about 37% of this value. This value here will be 1 over e times 20 over e squared. That's going to be 20 over e cubed, whatever that is. So this value here is going to be 3 over 15 hundredths of a second. For the values of R and L as above, use the transfer function and the initial and final value theorems to determine the initial and steady state values of the output voltage, little e sub O of t, if the input voltage is given by e, little e sub i of t equals 3e to the minus 2t. Well, here's the transfer function as we've seen before. We always put the output over the input when we're in the S domain. And we know that this ratio is always given by this quantity here, regardless of what these look like. Um, we are given a particular value for little e sub i of t. From that we can get big E sub i of s. Okay, so we have to get the Laplace transform of um, little e sub i of t. Well, the tree is just a constant factor. We pull that out. Um, what about this thing inside the brackets here? Well, you can look this up in tables. You'll see that the Laplace transform of e to the at a is any constant is given by 1 over um, s minus a. So in this example a is minus 2 
So we have 1 over s minus minus 2, or 1 over s plus 2, and that's multiplied by the 3 outside. So now we can get big E sub O of s, okay, and that will lead us to little e sub i of t. Well, it would actually be the inverse Laplace transform of this thing, if we wanted to get this. Or sorry, um, uh, it's this thing here that we are interested in. Okay, um, right, so what do we do? Well, we just uh, multiply um, the transfer function by e i sub i of s. So that's s over s plus r over l multiplied by 3 over s plus 2. Now, we worked out r over l earlier. Okay, we saw that it's 1500. So we just multiply out the denominator here to get E, big E sub O of S. Now, of course, we're interested in little e sub O of T. We, we could get that by getting the inverse Laplace transform of this thing here, big E sub O of S. Um, okay, so that could be quite complicated, but we don't have to do, to do that because we're only interested in the in initial and final values of the output voltage. Um, and that's where the initial and final value theorems come in. So we're only interested in this thing at t equals zero, or um, the limit of this thing as t approaches zero. And we're also only interested in this thing as for indefinitely large values of t, in other words, as t approaches infinity, the final or steady state value of this thing. So this is what we're after. As I've said before, we won't be getting the inverse Laplace transform of this thing. Um, we're only interested in, in this thing, the value of this thing as t approaches zero. And the initial value theorem tells us the following. This thing here is given by the limit as s approaches infinity of s multiplied by this thing here. So we can just work with this thing here and take a limit to answer our question. So we want a limit as s approaches infinity of s multiplied by this thing here. Well, we multiply s by what's on top to get 3s squared. Okay, so how do we take this limit? Well, in rational quantities like this, that is a ratio of expressions, we normally divide above and below by the highest power of s. So we divide above by s squared and we divide underneath by s squared. So that's going to give us the limit as s approaches infinity of 3 divided by 1 plus 1502 over s squared plus 3000 over s squared. Actually this should be s. Okay now we can easily see what's going to happen as s approaches infinity. So I haven't changed anything, I've just divided above and below by s squared by the same thing. Assuming that s is not zero, of course. Um, anyway, as s approach, well, well, s won't be zero because we're taking the limit as h, s approaches infinity, so we don't have to worry about that small point. Okay, so as s approaches infinity, this thing here will approach zero, of course. And this thing here will also approach zero. So we can see that the entire quantity is going to approach 3 divided by 1, which is 3. And uh, we're dealing with the output voltage. So um, the initial output voltage will be 3 volts. Now let's consider the final or steady state value for the output voltage. So we want to get the limit as t approaches infinity of e sub o of t. Well, the final value theorem tells us um, this thing is given by the limit as s approaches 0 of s times big E sub O of s. So that's the limit as s approaches 0 of this thing multiplied by s. So just like before, we get 3s squared over s squared 
plus 1502s plus 3000. Now we don't have to divide above and below by the highest power of s here to see what's going to happen. As s approaches 0, um, this thing here is going to approach 0 obviously. This term will approach 0 and this term will approach 0. So the whole thing is going to approach 0 over 3000, which is 0 volts. Okay, that's just the, that's the end of the question. Um, I just want to mention something about the previous limit that we took. We took the limit as s approaches infinity of 3s squared over s squared plus 1502s plus 3000. See, we, we can't just let s approach infinity here. This thing here will approach infinity. This term will approach infinity. This term will approach infinity. So we're going to get something like infinity over infinity, which is not equal to 1. So, um, you know, infinity over infinity isn't defined. So that's why we had to divide above and below by the highest power of s last time. So if you remember, we got um, this s squared. Went, we, we ended up getting 3 over 1, which was 3.